joining us. And uh, can you write the name down? Peter's our new doorman. Thanks, Peter, for joining <laughs> us. Yeah, if you don't mind closing it, uh, let's see who's coming in. Okay. So we have, uh, let's see here, <clears throat> Rebecca Ellis, who is the state director for the office of Senator Peter Welch, with us in person. Great to see you, former House member as well. And Catherine uh, Becker Van Haste. Okay, from Senator uh, Bernie Sanders' office. And thanks for uh, joining us, uh, Catherine. I, I realized there, uh, we emailed somebody, but for you to be able to pull this together probably within the last 15 minutes is huge. Uh, so thank you for joining us. So we are here, uh, and the reason we've asked the two of you, and we're also reaching out and we'll work with uh, Congresswoman Balance team as well as one of the things we're facing in this state, and others can speak to it perhaps more eloquently and more deeply than I can, is uh, really a school construction crisis. We have many buildings that uh, need to, not only, I would say, massive renovations, but need new buildings. New buildings to really fit a 21st century education, uh, new buildings that have, you know, the laboratories, the experience, the feel of them that you want to walk in and have an incredible academic experience. And so on top of that, one of the things we have led the way in, it appears, is PCB testing and testing for other chemicals. And as we heard, as we know in Burlington and as other schools are testing, we are going to have to respond to that. And we thought that uh, we wanted to make this aware to our federal delegation, given the huge amount of money this will take. Um, and uh, just for you to hear the concern, see if you have any you know, initial response to the concern. I also want to give my committee members and colleagues an opportunity to say a few words about what they're seeing in their districts or what they may have heard from superintendents and others recently. But it's a big item. And I would also say, I think it's, from my perspective, it's a bipartisan issue. It's going to hit all the states. Uh, and we would love for, if possible, to get some federal funding for this. So that's my piece. I don't know if anybody else wants to add to that what they're seeing or their own personal experiences. Senator Bullock, you've been up in, you can say maybe a word about Burlington High School. <laughs> Oh, where do I, where do I start? Um, what angle do you want me to attack this from? Well, um, why don't you just, just for the record, kind of just tell us all what happened in Burlington okay. a little bit. Um, and Rebecca's parents are my neighbors, so she, I'm sure she's well-schooled in this issue. Um, so I'll try not to go on too long because I could speak for hours, but I think I explained to some of you that when you decide to make renovations to a school, because we wanted to make renovations to our high school um, because we had leaky roofs, we had window casings that were literally falling out of the window onto the ground below. Um, we have, I've told you, five buildings connected by plexiglass walkways, which were really difficult for any students that had mobility issues almost impossible um, not to mention an HVAC system that it's incredibly expensive to run I mean almost to the point of not being sustainable um, it was so old um, so we decided to make renovations and we had a I was part of this before I was on the school board I was part of this group called VHS re-envisioning and we basically went out to the community and tried to get support for to pass a bond to do some renovations to the building buildings so we passed a 70 million dollar bond uh, but the way it works is that once you you decide to renovate that's when you've passed your bond you've done all the work now your building gets tested for contamination 
Mm. And that's when, it's kind of a weird system that happens after the fact. That's when our building got tested and that these high levels of PCBs were discovered. So at that point, um, it was literally the first day of school, our kids showed up and they were told they had to leave. So, I mean, I can't exaggerate the crisis that we had because our kids went into basically lockdown. They were sent home the first day of school in September and then the pandemic got tacked on. So they were home for, you know, close to a year. <laughs> These are high school kids. Did you for COVID? Before, no, with COVID. With COVID, okay. Um, but they were home about five months before COVID. And one thing that we've learned, which is an unfortunate and tragic truth, is that some kids are actually way better off in school than they are at home. And um, it was really hard for, you know, we have high rates of poverty in Burlington, and it was really hard for a lot of our kids to not have a place to go to. And, our school board meetings were gut-wrenching because parents would come on crying and kids would come on crying and what am I going to do? We didn't, we didn't know what to do because um, we were told that we had this poisonous building and that we should all leave. So anyway, luckily we had an empty department store. You all know the story. And then we had three developers who came in and just literally in three months, I remember when I was given that time frame, in three months we're going to have this building ready. And I was like, no way. They did it almost to the day, three months. They got in there and retrofitted it to be a school. It's obviously not perfect by any means, but it was at least a place for our kids to come. In the meantime, you know, we did lose a lot of kids. They never came back. We just lost them. To where? We don't know. They just, it was like truancy to the max. They just didn't know. You lost them, and that's what happens when a school gets closed down. So, just from my experience, this is why this is something I'm really passionate about. Is I don't want to see this happen in any other district in the state because the consequences are really pretty severe. Um, so, anyway, long story short, we then had to sort of regroup, start all over again. Um, hired this company called DAR that has built schools all over New England to come and help us come up with a plan for a new building. We ended up with three and then we voted on the one that was the least expensive and hopefully the, the quickest to build and um, also sort of the most compact. We just didn't want a sprawling campus like we had before. So, um, and that was, you know, we're hoping that that will open in 2025. Um, it's already it's been pushed back a couple months now, so it won't be probably won't be ready for the beginning of the school year, but hopefully a few months in. Um, but we did have to pass, as you know, a $165 million bond. So um, it will obviously be a burden for the taxpayers in our city. I mean, there's just no denying it, but at the same time, what choice did we have? We had no high school. We have a three and a half year lease on that building that we're in right now. We have to be out at the end of three and a half years. So we were, I mean, it was just, we had no choice. We had to pass this bond and it's got, it is going to be really hard for a lot of folks. Uh, the property taxes are going to go up and that's why I feel that at some point the state needs to help out, not cover the whole cost by any means, but just help out take a little bit of the burden off the taxpayers. And as we've already been talking about, you know, you don't want that per pupil number to grow to the point where nobody wants to pay because they're, they just don't, they can't comprehend these per pupil numbers. Mm -hmm. So it becomes an equity issue too, as we all know. But anyway, thank you, Rebecca. I know you know the whole story, but. No, thank you. Um, Anybody thank else you. want to just add anything or? We just met with superintendents okay. last week as a committee. We went to the luncheon, and, and they also expressed the seriousness. You know, we talk a lot about in this building climate change. Our buildings, you know, some of them are just literally heat just cut going right out the buildings, and the costs are huge. And you know, there's a lot of good potential when we think about this stuff. Yeah, please. Yeah, sir. That there's so many others from what we heard Thursday. It's like every school in the state is in the same situation. And they don't know 
what, you know, what contamination they're going to find yeah. when they start doing that, too. Mm -hmm. So it's an infrastructure issue. Yeah. Uh, and the schools are kind of the glue that keeps the local community and society together. So, mm -hmm. um, so I guess all we'd love to know is when does the check come in? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what press to call? Um, I'm happy to defer to um, Katie if you would like to go first. Rebecca, why don't you feel free to go first? I think it'll be easier for folks in the room to hear from you, and then I can just add in a couple pieces around the edges. Yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you for inviting um, Katie and me here, your federal um, delegation, and I'm sure that um, Representative Ballant would, and her representative would like to talk with you as well. And it is important, I think, for all of us to be on the same page. Um, and this is a crisis um, in Vermont. Senator Welch, when he was Representative Welch, um, spoke with the House Education Committee in 2020. At that time, um, the U.S. House had passed um, what was called the Moving Forward Bill and had passed, I believe, it was $130 billion for school construction. Um, so uh, Congressman Welch was very excited that that might become law and might help states with school construction funding. He's also toured many schools around Vermont to look at the conditions of the buildings and it, truly our schools are facing a crisis. Um, so unfortunately the $130 billion was not included in the final infrastructure bill that passed. Um, so I uh, can say confidently that Senator Welch will continue to look for funds, federal funds. Um, that said, um, you know, there, there's no certainty, of course, of what will pass in Congress in terms of funding for this issue. Um, there are some existing programs that can be helpful to school districts. Um, the USDA has a program, um, the Community Facilities Program, um, which I believe is the program that helped the Winooski School District at least get a loan, a very low interest loan for school construction. I'm not sure if there was any grant funding in that, but that's an existing program that can be helpful. Um, I know that a number of schools are also applying for grants through the Renew America Schools Act, which was included in the bipartisan infrastructure bill. And um, that's for energy efficiency improvements. Um, that was going to be spread out over a four or five year period. It's um, $500 million total, and it's $80 million a year um, that they're rolling out. And there was also, I don't know how many schools took advantage of the ESSER funds that came through um, the COVID funding, but that was another possibility for HVAC systems. And I don't know how many schools applied to that. So, and just a reminder to other, you know, Folks, you know, because it was COVID connected, the HVAC. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so those are sort of some of the existing programs, and I'm sure our delegation can continue looking for grant programs that could be helpful to schools. But I know that also you're looking at a major kind of systematic problem and issue of funding. So these are um, more, you know, case by case funding opportunities. Um, so that's really all I have to say, but happy to take questions or turn it over to Katie. If you'd like and to. If I could just some. ask, yeah. uh, Giselle, so you'll take our concerns, what you're hearing, and bring them to <clears throat> Senator Welch, just so again he can hear it directly that it hears through you that this is we really see. And I know, that, as you said, he recognizes this. Yeah. We're looking. I mean serious crisis so we're looking for anybody uh anybody else that you think we should uh, down the road talk to have a conversation with uh this is something that just can't uh, what i'm afraid is going to happen is we're going to all start coming in with our photos of our schools you know th this is that bad out there and um yeah kids shouldn't have to have these kinds of experiences no sure teacher senator Grew thank you um yeah so to piggyback Kids shouldn't have these experiences, but let's face it, our school districts are, are some of our biggest employers, if not our biggest employer in the state. And so we also have a lot of staff and teachers who are spending you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours in these buildings um, every year. So it's, it's even, it's, it's bigger than just the impact on our children. And I also just wanna 
remind folks too that when we talk about child care and the child care crisis, you know, schools play a part in child care. Um, they allow for adults to go out in the, in the world and work. So there's that piece of uh, mm -hmm. really yeah. critical uh, piece of the puzzle. And also, we had Dr. Mark Levine speak to us this morning, uh, Commissioner Mark Levine. And a lot of what he talks about in terms of public health is is very integral also in our school buildings. Like, they, they're very much connected. He talked about everything. From, he did bring up PCBs. But, um, you know, some of these buildings, their physical structure is dangerous, especially to folks with mobility issues. They, the air quality is horrible. The lighting is an issue. Um, just there's so many factors that are uh, part of public health and personal health. And, you know, he keeps coming back around to the importance of those early years, mm -hmm. how critical they are to setting a foundation to, to the rest of your life. So all of these things are connected and school is, is part of that spiral of health, safety, so on and so forth. And I know that folks know that, but I just think it's a good reminder because we do tend to be like, oh, kids, schools over here. But uh, it really has to be seen as part of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Katie. Thank you, and thanks everybody for having me join virtually. I sort of feel like I'm hovering over Rebecca's shoulder, but uh, really appreciate the option for a virtual join. Um, so for those who I haven't met, I'm Senator Sanders, State Director. Um, my primary expertise is health policy. So certainly for my own self and as a parent, recognize this as a public health issue, as well as an education issue, um, as was just discussed, this is a tremendous issue for all of our Vermonters who work in schools. Um, there is a certain impact here for all of you as you look at the responsibility the legislature has to address uh, health care for it, retirees um, through the pension system and the health care benefits system. Um, so there really is no decoupling this issue from, from health um, and from other responsibilities within the legislature. So really, first and foremost, commend you all for taking this on. Um, I wish I was coming with my giant check from the federal government to just uh, hand it over and let you all address all of the significant needs we know are happening, uh, not just in Burlington, but across the state. Um, from Senator Sanders' perspective, obviously, former mayor of Burlington, lives in Burlington, has grandchildren in the public school system, uh, we're very well aware of what's been going on. The delegation was very glad to pull together as many federal agency folks as we could um, from EPA on around the alphabet soup of the federal government to try to find some federal funds and opportunities for Burlington. Um, we also knew as we were having those conversations that this would not be the last town experiencing this challenge. Um, I appreciate, uh, Senator Campion, you're mentioning that this is a bipartisan issue. That's certainly our hope in the Congress as well. Um, our kids, our teachers, our school administrators, uh, folks who work within the schools, they live in every congressional district in the country. Uh, we have schools in every congressional district in the country. This is a tremendously important issue um, for all of us to, to address together. Um, and again, it's gonna have impact for years to come. Um, one thing I just wanna highlight for everyone's situational awareness is Senator Sanders is set to become the chair of the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee in the Senate, um, which is, as you can hear by those uh, different categories, a huge undertaking. Um, he has been working diligently over the last congressional Senate recess to have a host of meetings um, with cabinet secretaries, folks across these agencies, as well as Vermonters with lived experience that can help him inform his role as chairman. Certainly one of the things that we are hearing and seeing over and over and over again is the cross section between the healthcare space, the education space, the labor space, the pension space, they just all coalesce within each other so consistently 
Um, and I think this is a sort of a perfect example of that. Um, but in his work, you know, one of the things that we certainly understand is that the federal government has put requirements in place on our states, on our schools to do certain work to have safe schools for our students and for all those adults who work in the school system. And as a result, there should be an opportunity for the federal government to come in and be supportive um, when issues arrive from the very work that we're asking schools to do in terms of testing. We see this in lead. Um, so this is none of this is sort of new, but we recognize how important it is. Um, Rebecca spoke briefly to the availability of ESSER funds to be used for ventilation as connected to COVID. Um, obviously that was a COVID specific connection. There were ARPA dollars made available for that, for addressing safety in schools. While that can't fix our problem today, to my mind, I see this as a good sign that there is awareness in the Congress that safety in schools around um, environmental safety is something that we need to be looking at and focusing on and providing federal funds to help attain. Um, you know, we obviously have a uh, partisan split between the House and the Senate. We're gearing up towards a presidential election year. It is going to be a challenging time to legislate. I don't want to paint a rosy picture of a Congress that's that's ready to get to work, but certainly in your Vermont congressional delegation, we are ready to get to work. Um, and I speak, I think, with some confidence on behalf of all three of them. They're very willing and able to partner together to find solutions and at the very, very least, raise up the issues and the voices that you're, you're talking about today. Uh, one of the things that can be most effective to us is to hear these Vermont experiences that then as chairman, Senator Sanders can discuss with his fellow committee members. He finds storing stories one of the most compelling ways to find common ground with colleagues, particularly as we're negotiating legislation. Um, so we, you know, in the education space and his role as chairman of the health committee, um, this is certainly something we're going to be thinking about as well as his roles on the environment and public works committees. Um, so, so really appreciate you all shining a light on this important issue. And we are happy to provide as much of a resource as we can be, which just to end, I will say, you know, while the resource we would love to bring to bear today is funding, part of what we can also do is help you with research. Um, we have at our disposable, the Congressional Research Service, you are, you have constituents who we share, you are also our constituents. And so if there are particular provisions of federal law that you wanna understand better, our office and our delegation is here to help you with that. So we can ask the Congressional Research Service to get to work for us, to help us better understand um, some of what might be currently available um, and, and appropriate uses of federal funds. So again, I apologize for not having uh, the the magic sauce here to solve this issue, but really appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to all of you today. Thank you, no, and thank you for taking the time, truly. I, I mean, it would be absolutely amazing if Senator Sanders kicked off his conversations as the chair, just talking about school construction uh, throughout the country. I mean, it would, uh, and I do think it would would resonate with everybody out there. Uh, you know, particularly I think in rural states. Um, and I think one of the, the I'm just draft or jotting down ideas. Maybe there are ways for us to also, in terms of getting this message out, talk with our counterparts in northern New England, uh, New Hampshire and Maine in particular, uh, that I think are both struggling with this issue, and maybe try to speak with mm -hmm. one voice to Secretary of Education, U.S. Secretary of Education, to, to our governors and our shared, uh, you know, delegation in in. In DC, again, just to sort of raise this up as a, as the crisis it really is. Committee questions, comment comments. I really appreciate. Sure. Yeah, the two of you coming in Anytime. and uh, look forward to continuing to, to work on this. And thanks for. Happy to. 
Yeah. Great. But yeah. Thank you for having both of us here, and yeah. great to be on the same page. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Take care, everyone. Digger is here, and they're thinking about headlines. <laughs> the feds deliver, or the feds don't. <laughs> Back and forth. We're in the newsroom with both of them printed out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank thank you. you. Thanks a million. Thanks, Katie. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank you all. Hayden. We're going to take a five minute break. But is that okay? Go ahead and take a five minute stretch and then we'll come back to it. I think we'll move, uh, we have Hayden on the agenda because I want us to dig into something that came up last week proficiency versus standards. We have uh, Treasurer coming in and then we have uh, some schools going to do a bunch of things. So let's just take a five minutes. Yeah. Hayden, I might.